Hello and thanks for joining me. Well this evening I've just brought you down to where I moor my boat on the lake in front of the house uh, for a, a lake shot at golden hour. Well, we're still a good half an hour to 40 minutes or so before sundown and the sun has already gone down behind a bank of, of low misty cloud which has been on the horizon all day. This isn't about a spectacular sunset shot but what I have got is some really nice high cloud and that's what caught my eye. Uh, I don't know whether it'll catch any colour but there's some lovely texture in it and it's such a beautiful quiet still evening that I thought I could make some use of it. Now I've been taking some shots already uh, with a 10 stop filter on which is getting me a shutter speed of about 30 seconds and because it's so still my boat isn't moving at all and that's really difficult when you're shooting uh, a watercraft they tend to wobble about a bit but it's absolutely still and what that's allowing me to do is to really smooth out the water and I was able to catch it while there was still some quite nice uh, light on it and some nice colour. It's starting to fade now but I grabbed that before I started talking to you so that's my foreground shot hopefully captured. So now it's just about capturing a, a decent shot of the sky and I've got plenty of time there's no rush at all and then I can stitch those two together in post. Um, I'm going to take the 10 stop off because I don't really need that for the sky. Uh, it's uh, starting to put some nice rays up at the moment all coming out in a sort of diagonal sun's just peeping through the clouds so I think what I'm going to do is start taking some shots now uh, and then I'll come back to you and tell you more about what I'm up to. Now I moved my boat onto the summer mooring just a couple of days ago and it's not very attractive if you get close up. There's old tyres that I used to stop it bashing against this ancient dry stone wall. Uh, but I always put it here in the summer if I can because otherwise I have to drag it off the mud every time I want to use it. So I thought to myself actually if I step back from it there could be quite a nice composition. So I've got this nice reed bed that at the moment isn't too thick and if I leave it just another few days uh, that's going to start to really thicken up but at the moment there's bits of water appearing through it just behind the stern of the boat. So that's quite a nice framing element on the left hand side. So I've then got a bit of foreground interest where I can't see too much of the, the nasty clutter. I've got these stones that run across diagonally in my composition uh, along the bottom of the frame uh, and some quite nice texture in those stones. Then I've got some old fence posts, bit of gnarly old barbed wire. I don't mind that, it's kind of part of the flavour of the location. Uh, and so I've got the reed bed, I've got a nice area of water in front of me uh, and as I mentioned earlier I've, I've shot that with a uh, 30 second exposure using my 10 stop which I've now taken off. Um, there's not a vast amount of colour but I have got this really nice ridge of cloud running right across the top of my composition and I'm hopeful that that'll take on a little bit more colour. It's, it's nicely lit up at the moment and I have captured a shot or two of it and let's get another one now. The problem I have here very often, I come down to shoot a sunset and what happens is you've got a really interesting bank of cloud. By the time the sunset gets going, the cloud has actually moved through and I'm left with a clear sky. So I've learnt my lesson. I've captured that now, so hopefully I can make use of that. Um, and there's no harm at all in leaving that in and blending in the middle part of the sky later on. So if that takes some colour on and those high clouds have moved away, I can still use them in my overall composition. Uh, and that's kind of an important technique to, to bear in mind uh, when you're 
not in a hurried situation, you've got your composition dialed in and you're just waiting on light. There's no harm at all in taking images over a period of time and just bringing the best of them together. And it doesn't have to just be two, it can be as many as you like. Now I'll be honest, there are far better compositions to be had from different points around the lake, but I only wanted to come this far because I've got this land in front of the house and with things the way they are at the moment, I wouldn't want to go any further afield for photography purposes. Now, even though this isn't the finest composition I could hope for, uh, it's still a useful exercise. It's still practice. It makes me think about what I'm doing. And let's be fair, it's also relaxation and enjoyment. You know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I happen to live in this sort of area. And so, you know, I can take advantage of it. Uh, but I, um, I certainly think that coming out with a camera and working on a composition, uh, and, and I have spent quite some time getting it exactly how I wanted it before I started shooting, uh, and then waiting for the light and simply enjoying the scene as well. Um, it's uh, certainly pretty therapeutic. As I mentioned earlier, those, those high clouds have now moved out of my frame. I'd locked my uh, composition in a while ago and there's no way to incorporate them anyway. I'm shooting at 12 millimeters, which is as wide as I can go. Um, but I think I've got everything I need now. I don't think it's going to color up any more than it has so far. Uh, there's a few quite interesting rays appearing because there are some breaks in the cloud above where the sun is, uh, but the sun is now solidly in cloud, so I certainly don't expect much in the way of colour. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. What I thought I might do this time is let's go back to the house and have a look at what we've got and put an image together. Well now I'm back at the office and I've processed the image and I must say in advance I'm quite happy with how it turned out in the end because I wasn't that hopeful that this would even see the light of day. Also, before I left, I got another image as well, which I'll put up at the end uh, and you'll see why I'm sharing that additional image. So for the main one that I was showing you earlier, here are the three exposures that we're going to be working with. Now, this is the exposure that I'm using for the foreground. As you can see, it's a 20 second exposure, smoothing out the water nicely. Now, this is the image that I'm proposing to use just for this very top part, for this line of cloud up here. And the last image that I captured, this is the one I'm gonna use for this area here, for the main sky in my final composite. Now, when I import raw files into Lightroom, I've got a preset organized that gets applied to every file. So I don't have to synchronize them or do any manual adjustments. As you can see from the sliders, this is all there is, very little going on at all, but just to enhance the characteristics of my particular camera sensor, and it just saves me a bit of time. So the next thing to do is to export these three exposures as layers into Photoshop. Now, before I go into any detail about how I brought together these exposures to create the final image, I just wanted to touch on the general principles that I always follow whenever I make a photograph. And those are, I want to balance impact and subtlety. And by impact, I don't necessarily mean that there's some great drama going on in the image. Impact can still come from something that's really serene and tranquil. Now I've covered most of these processes in previous videos, so I'm not gonna go into any detail about all of those, other than to say that I've masked the various areas to bring together a final composition. I've added some noise reduction, uh, some sharpening, uh, and also a contrast filter. So that's the final composition that I'm using. But one thing I did wanna cover with you is simply how I will enhance this using what's already there. And I've done that with a curves adjustment layer. And what I've done with that curves adjustment layer is to only target the red channel. If you look at the histogram up here, you can see I've lifted the red channel in the peak area, which is just to the highlight side of the midtones. And if I make that layer visible now, this is what it's done to the image. 
Now, of course, having done that, I do run the risk of people making observations along the lines of, oh yeah, but you're just adding color into it. Well, I've got two responses to that. Firstly, I'm not actually adding any color at all. I'm simply emphasizing color that's already there on the red channel that was captured by my camera. And secondly, and far more importantly, it's my photograph. I'll do what I like with it. Thank you very much. So now I've brought the image into Lightroom and let me just talk you through one or two additional changes that I've made to really bring it together. Firstly, as you can see, it's very different to the Photoshop version, particularly this foreground here, some quite significant changes. But let's start up here in the basic panel and you can see I've brought the whites up quite considerably made a few color adjustments as well. I've moved the hue across ever so slightly towards the red. Uh, my greens, I always desaturate those slightly. And I've also reduced the luminance just ever so slightly on the reds and the oranges. And by working with luminance, what that can do is it can make the colors richer without increasing the saturation. So it's a more subtle adjustment. So having made those adjustments, the main thing that I've done with this is very much around local adjustments using filters. Now I've got two graduated filters added on here. The first one for the sky reduces the exposure by just over three quarters of a stop and adds the tiniest little hint of contrast, clarity and dehaze, really just to create a little bit of definition in these clouds here in the central part of the sky. Uh, but again, always thinking about subtlety. And finally, a series of radial filters. And as you may know, if you've seen any of my previous videos on processing, that's really where I spend most of my time. So there's a couple of radial filters in the sky. This one, just to lighten that area up a little bit. And this one here, simply creating a little bit more definition in this area of the sky. In this area here, I've simply increased the exposure by about half a stop and just a little bit of saturation to emphasize the color in the water. And the reason for that is when I took that exposure, it was quite a long time before the sky exposures and there was less color. So I just wanted to enhance it ever so slightly. Down here on the waterline of the boat, I've increased the exposure and the shadows because without that radial filter, there's absolutely no definition at all along the bottom of the boat. Uh, but the ones that make the most difference, of course, are these ones in the foreground. And what I've done with these, they all follow a similar uh, formula. Um, I've increased the temperature a little bit more magenta, increased the exposure and the saturation. And by positioning these radial filters on these little raised areas of grass, uh, enhancing the way they would naturally catch the light, but leaving the shadows in between them to create depth and layers within even the foreground area, that's given it a much higher degree of impact than it would have had if I'd left that whole area as flat as the original exposures tended to suggest. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did take another image before I left the lake and I'll show you that one at the end uh, along with this image for you to have a good look at. But I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers. <laughs>